The cell wasn't any worse than the others she'd been in. I've become a connoisseur of confinement, Lydia thought. What differed was the level of security surrounding it. The Bogiati military prison on the island of Aegina was encircled with the elite corps of brigadiers. The island itself was surrounded by a fleet of ocean-going vessels whose combined deck space exceeded the island's square footage. Overhead circled a fleet of aircraft whose sides bristled with so many guns they looked like porcupines. In subspace orbit was an armada of spacecraft equipped with so many plasma cannon that they could have seared the surface of Gia with one fusillade. You'd think they were greeting an arriving Imperial, Lydia thought sardonically. Oh, that's right. The Empress Hecuba returns from her Imperial tour tomorrow. The booking process seemed more akin to military induction, with a strip, shower, body scan, medical screening, cavity searches, cuticle cutting, toe jam inspection, and a variety of unmentionable indignities. What's that rash on your forearm? the doctor asked. Lydia looked at her blankly. What rash? Right there, those red spots. She looked closely at the area indicated. On the interior of her forearm, three inches from her wrist, tiny red dots sprinkled an oval patch of skin one inch wide and two inches long, each dot so small as to look like a pinprick. That's a rash? How long has it been that way? Lydia shrugged. I don't know, a while, I think. She tried to remember if she had it the last time she'd left Cassis and Vischers. Does it itch? She shook her head. Well, on occasion, she amended, remembering having scratched it before. Bioscan is clear, no infectious pathogens aboard, the doctor said, looking at her handheld. Must be a histamine response to some allergen. Then they gave her an orange pair of formals and hustled her to a cell deep underground. A grill in the ceiling high above issued a stream of chilly air. The solid granite block walls yielded no clue to what lay beyond. The door was set in a wall of carbonic alloy reinforced glasma, the door itself a single sheet of clear glasma. Beyond the door stood four guards, two more than she usually had. The bunk was a thick slab of travertine sitting directly on the floor. The toilet was a ring of porcelain on a pedestal in the corner, the sink an indentation in the wall sticking its lower lip into the room. Two bare loom globes hung near the ceiling in excess of the requisite lone source lighting. Fancy, Lydia thought, feeling spoiled to have so much light. She put her face in her hands and wept in despair.